today I want to discuss a case which demonstrated a nice um, ventricular septal defect and also a cleft mitral valve which were part of an AV canal defect. So what is an AV canal defect? It's also called an endocardial cushion defect. But basically it's a spectrum of abnormalities that can range from either being complete or partial. Um, the complete involves the atria, the ventricles and the valves and more or less you end up with one big hole whereas incomplete or partial just relates to the atria only normally. Um, the AV canal is normally about 3 to 5 percent of congenital heart disease. And so before I had mitral valve I was talking about in many ways when we do actually talk about valves in relation to AV canal defects particularly if it's a single valve, then the leaflets are actually termed to be bridging leaflets and you have mural leaflets rather than actually being a mitral and a tricuspid in classic terms. And so in the case I want to present, it's a male, it's around 50. They basically had a repair for a primary ASD around 20. At the time of the surgery, they did actually identify that he had a VSD. They also identified a cleft mitral. They also talked about a partial tricuspid um, valve cleft as well. But at the time, there were no other repair repairs performed. But I'm not quite sure why that was the case, but so it is. In this case, this patient also had no significant genetic associated conditions or any particular symptoms as well. Uh, commonly, it does go with many things. Trisomy 21 of Downs is the most common and uh, most well known, but it's also a range of various other ones from Noonan's to a, viewer, a few other more obscure conditions. So I'll present the images of the case. So when looking at the original quite standard view, there's nothing sort of obvious when you first actually look at it. It looks relatively normal. You think, oh, it's a normal parasternal long axis. Possibly walls a little bit thickened, left atrium probably a little bit larger, but nothing particularly obvious in terms of the valve there in that first view. And again, when I zoom up there to measure the actual wall thicknesses, it actually, again, nothing really jumps out in that first view. When you tilt over though and actually look at the anterior leaf of the mitral valve, you suddenly think, oh, there's actually a relative gap up there, even though I have the leaflet there, the leaflet there, there's a hole there in the middle. And when I come over a little bit more, I've got the colour flow, and I see two elements to colour flow. So it's some posteriorly directed mitral regurgitation, and the secondary flow seen up there above it. If I now go to my short axis view, well, I see part of that uh, mitral regurgitation, but more prominently what I'm looking at in this view is actually the ventricular septal defect. And it's actually a Gabodi defect, which is a left ventricular to right, at or right atrial ventricular septal defect. And you can see quite nice shunting going across there. And this is a zoomed up view. Always have to remember that normally we have a degree of overlap of the mitral and tricuspid at insertion points and so there's normally a degree of a septum that actually will cross over towards the left the right atrium here i'm just measuring the width of that jet about four to five millimeters when i look in short axis here now i'm focusing more on the valve and you can actually see the cleft of that mitral leaflet quite nicely it's got a few here looking at it at different levels going up and down and you can see it extends quite the way back towards the wall there and so again, just looking at that mitral regurgitation in just slightly different frames at different levels. And there's a, as we get cried up again, that view comes back into view again. And so when we look at the four chamber, being the AV canal defect, the other thing we notice is we don't actually have the normal apically displaced positioning of the septal leaflet of the tricuspid valve. But that is actually at the same level as the mitral in that view which also gives you some the suggestion that things aren't quite normal there. Focusing a little bit more over on the right ventricle. The right ventricle actually is dilated when you actually look at the basal and mid-widths in this case. The mitral view you can see there, there is a regurgitation. It's not too significant, but there's definitely some. And the piece of is not too huge. Looking at the right ventricle. And again, you see two components of flow. You see some trivial tricuspid regurgitation. So even though he has a known tricuspid cleft, it's not too significant. And that flow going around, that is coming from the septal defect, which we shall look at very shortly. 
just come through some of these pictures a bit faster. Let's just look at the ventricular function. And again, looking quite good in terms of that ventricular function. And looking again at that martial regurgitation. And so here we're looking at that atrial septum. And that we here you can now see that ventricular septal flow going through. I will leave it there. Thank you.